Oh, we on air now, woman. <laughs> hey, why she trying? She behind the scenes trying to get ready. No, we on air now, woman. <laughs> no, I, mean, I am. This joint podcast with one of my besties, Miss Hunter. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> So what's going on, Miss Hunter? It's good to be back. Yeah. Listen, be before we, yeah, it's yes. been a, it's been a long time since you've been on air. Well, it's been a long time, but yo, this setup is amazing. Oh, well, you I'm know. I'm actually in awe of what you've created here. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Well, you know I me. Mean? I try. Okay. You know. You know how it is that you know I may act like a bumbling idiot, but. You do a good job. <laughs> I would have never anticipated. This kind of you know, what I mean? oh, look, get the job. mic now. Get the mic. Okay. They got all in your face. No way, but yeah, pull it up. Go ahead. Uh-huh. Hey, no, yeah, there you go. That's, that's yeah, right. it's not. It's not gonna hurt you. This is much. You know, it's gonna go somewhere, but I'm not. <laughs> but this is much different than being in my kitchen. Yeah. On my laptop. On your laptop, and yeah. yeah. This. This is. This is real. It seems like it's yeah. Yeah. You went you went in for the hall now. Boom bam. <laughs> <laughs> so how Boom, you been? Bam. I've been managing. Yeah. I'm not gonna do that Tierra Mari thing where they ask her how she's been and yeah. she just breaks down and cries. Oh, no, 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 I'm no, not gonna do that. that. Thank yeah. thank you for the drink. Um but Oh yeah. Yeah. Woodford Reserve. But I've been managing. I've yeah. been managing. Mm-hmm. I've been managing. It's been a lot. Right, because for social workers, life is still lifing. Yeah, yes. So while I am still trying to help everyone else kind of stabilize their families, Mm -hmm. sometimes your own family is blowing up into bits and pieces, and you're thinking, whoa. Well, you know, that's that's the, the, the always, since we're always juggling that, you know, we're always juggling our family, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, with our our work. you know how how do you do that? Family and work. Because it, it's always that balancing act. You know, I mean, you. I fail a lot. I fail a lot at yeah. that because I always think that at the end of the day, my kids know where I'm. They know they can access me. They know that I'm available. They know I can reach her. I can see her. I can talk to her freely. Mm-hmm. And the thought is that the clients and the kids that we service, that's not the case, right? So I'm always, not always, but I have been known to put my stuff on the back burner Uh because uh I realize that that mom and that child don't have the same liberties that I may have or that my children may have. Mm. So sometimes I've I've not done a good job at balancing that, and and it's I mean, but you know you do it so well, and you've been doing it for many years. I've been doing it for a while. I'm blessed that I have a support system yeah. in place that if I'm not physically there, they don't miss a beat. Yeah, they don't miss a beat. So I'm I'm blessed in that regard that I have that support system, and. In that, when I can see that working for myself, then I'm like, how do I help my families get that support system? Because if they had that, mm-hmm. it might not, it might look different for them, right? Uh, it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. The chop may not be calling in because Johnny missed his his medical appointment because mom can't take off work mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. she has auntie joe over here that's willing to take johnny to his medical appointment Mm -hmm. and then call me and i can take my break during that time right so how do you how do you maneuver that that's that's the hope and and you know we always we're always interviewing new young bright-eyed you know me social workers and, and case managers and first thing we ask them is you know how do you What's your how, how do you balance, you know, what I mean, your, your work life mm-hmm. and here it is. We're struggling, struggling ourselves. So if they give me a BS answer, then I know they're BS <laughs> you know because it. it's not easy. <laughs> you know, it. because what's the first thing they say? Oh, well, you know, I go to the gym. I do. It. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I've been to the gym. No I'll be com- struggling. No comment. <laughs> no comment. I mean, like, yo, I'm put, I got my tights on. But if you walk. That's the same thing. So I try and get my steps in. 
I try and get my steps in because yeah. that's the same thing as exercising. But you know, us men, we want to go. We want to, you know, hit that that iron. You I was know, about to say I wanted, I want you to finish that sentence because that would take this conversation <laughs> so so somewhere, so yeah. somewhere, somewhere left. We don't, huh? want, we don't want that. Don't want that. But you know, like I said, that's what I mean. We want to. I mean, you know, man, we don't want to go there walking. We want to go there. We want to hit that iron. But I think if we had a balance on what that could look like, maybe the Mm -hmm. burnout would Mm -hmm. look different. Right? Because if we knew how to shift, like I just recently started painting again. I love to paint. I love to be creative. But at the end of the day, half of the time I'm so tired that I don't give myself that opportunity. So now it's you it's okay for you to cut off and and paint or i'll do it during um during these these workshops that yeah, i have to do yeah i just get my stuff and i i doodle and i create while people are talking so i can process what's the now let me before we even go to go to go to our since we're you know i mean we're, we're vibing here um the thing that i that i struggle with is is again one that maintaining that work that work balance that work life balance mm-hmm. so i'm still and i've been doing i've been doing this for like 15 years yeah you know but and and it's still a struggle it's a you know and i'm thank i'm very thankful for the the cases that in the department that i work in because mm-hmm. you know give me the teenagers right because that looks a lot different than having to go see oh. little april once yes. a week, right or yes yeah so or or, or a baby that's been abused um that's one thing that I that I I, I struggle with. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean that cause I couldn't see myself working those type cases. And you know, what I mean, listen, I give you your your blessings for. You know, you got it. <laughs> and I'll take and I'll take it. I'll t- I'll take it every time. Yeah. Every time. I love it. I don't love having to do it, mm-hmm. but I know that I'm not going to half ass it. Yeah. So. I don't want that little kid to experience this again. So I'm, I don't like the fight, but I'm built for it. Is what I tell yeah, people. Yeah. I don't like it, but I'll do it. And, and listen, to everybody, I've witnessed her in the courtroom. <laughs> I've known this lady for years. I would, she will tell her parent like it is. <laughs> right. And I'll be like, he ain't gonna snap. <laughs> Because it, it really is, I care. I do care, even if it seems like I don't. Yeah. I really care about what happens to you. And a lot of people, I've seen people leave, and I'm like, oh, come with, you know, they have an opening for you. Why don't you come? And I'm like, well, if I leave, and everybody else who really loves this leaves, who is going to be there to look out for the people that look like me? Yeah, yeah, so who, true. Who so are we going to leave it to? The so people true. who are here just because they want to check? Yeah, hold on a minute. Because um, okay. they want to check or they are waiting for the next big thing to happen. Mm-hmm, I'm mm-hmm. not waiting for the next big thing to happen. I'm not waiting for now. I do want to hit the lottery. Don't get me wrong. So I don't <laughs> oh, want to hit that. Let me borrow. I got I, I to borrow something. Like, right, I, I've already had it. I'm going to take six months off, but I'm coming back. I, w- I would still come back and work. Oh. I would. I would still come back and work. So I'm not waiting for the next big thing. So I'll take those cases because that's all I want to do. You like those cases? I like. Work. You sure you don't want to come over congregate care and work somewhere? Absol- absolutely. With not. some of these teens? Ab- absolutely not. I'm not built for that. <laughs> I'm not built for that. You know. So let me. So what? Let's say. Let me actually. So what? What kind of clients are the most difficult to work with? The mental health. The mental health? The mental health, because it's optional. I can't make you do your mental health. I yeah. can't make you take your medication. Um, and you'll see in some instances where even if we have a parent to sign the releases to say, yes, you can give this information out, they don't, those agencies, a lot of them don't want to give us that information. They feel like they are um, portraying that confidentiality because it's Mm. no longer a safe space because they have to share that information. So it's a catch 22. Mm. It's a catch 22. Mm. Cause I mean, even they give the, 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 the children options now. They get, I believe what is it? The 14, 14 and older, 14 and older, they can have an option of, they can just decline it or not. Yeah. So that, and what it is, is in 
they still want you to work a miracle without yeah. being able to address that mental health piece. And there's just no way that you can. The, the parent that I worked with today, she's a wonderful parent. Oh, like I, I've, I've seen her engage. Um, Marie said, keep doing great work. <laughs> keep what you're doing, Miss Hunter. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I can see she does, like I've seen her with her kids. She's amazing. But her mental health just keeps getting in the way. So it it, it, it interferes with the housing stability. Yeah. It yeah. interferes with her ability to, to process and to do the day-to-day stuff sometimes. But so how do I help her? She has mm. to be willing to follow through with that plan willingly. That's and that's the difficult piece. Cause I know, like, my issue with, especially with, you know, I mean, I work with a lot of the teens throughout, throughout the city. Mm. And just even mentioning, as soon as you mention mental, men, mental health, oh, no, no, I don't want to do it. You know, you know, I'm not, you know, that's for crazy people. No, nah, you know. They don't. They, but they're self-medicating. A lot of yes. our, a lot of our youth, a lot of our parents, they are self-medicating with marijuana, with pills, with mm-hmm. alcohol. Mm-hmm. And I, I, it's the struggle to combat that. Yeah. Now, let's go back to your past. Why did you want to get into social work? Because I get asked that a lot, but I'm asking you now. Why do you want to do this difficult job? Because I know what it's like to lose a parent. I know what it's like to be yeah. separated from a parent multiple times. I know what it's like to be separated from a sibling. Um, I know what that feels like. So if I can help another kid get to the other side and see that you can be okay if you utilize what's being provided for you, um, it's doable. Yeah. It's doable. It's not the best route, but it is doable. I can help you do the doable. And then if you use what I'm giving you, you'll do better. You'll do far better than I did. Uh. You'll do far better. You know, I can help parents. Yes. Moms yeah. who have less than favorable relationships with the fathers or the fathers yeah. are not it was one parent, I remember she told me she relapsed because her daughter's father had passed. And, you know, I am intimately familiar with that. Yes. Both of my daughters yes. have lost their fathers. And I'm like, let me help you through that process. And we can figure out a way to give you the coping mechanisms you need without using. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Well, no, back behind the scenes we talked about you starting your own parenting curriculum yes that is something that i am interested in um there's something there's a there's something askew between what they're getting in the parenting classes because every parent that comes in send them the parenting classes yes but there's little conversation between that instructor or that facilitator and the referral source So, for instance, I may want the young lady who I was talking to this afternoon, I may want her to get more information on how to prioritize what's important and what she needs to attend to for her children, along with herself, like healthy relationships and boundaries Mm -hmm. in her parenting class. She's not getting that. She's taken at least two parenting classes already, and she's on her fourth child. Yeah. Um, and there's there's something not quite there. Yes. Yeah. And I remember asking her earlier today, I'm like, well, what does a healthy relationship look like to you? I'm like, do you talk about that with your therapist? Do you talk about it, that in parenting classes? And she said, um, she said, yeah. I said, well, do you have? So I don't I don't have any. Ma'am, you are about to give birth in less than two or three months. How do you not have a healthy relationship? Is there a significant other? There is. But it doesn't sound like it's the we met, fell in love, and now we're having a child together. That's not what this is. Mm. You think she's going through an abuse? Is it domestic violence? I think it's an older relationship. I think it's an older man preying on someone who's very vulnerable and naive. That's what it is. Now, my question is, is the parenting class is helping her recognize her being in a an abusive relationship. And I'm not talking about just physical, mental as well. 
No, I, and I don't know okay. if the parenting class is for that, right? That yeah. might be something she deals with in therapy, talking about healthy relationships. But I think in parenting classes, there needs to be some conversation because we all know, you and I both know, anyone listening to this knows, as individuals, mm -hmm. when our love life is on point, we could be Claire Huxtable, oh. Bill Cosby. <laughs> oh, for sure. When she or he pisses you off or your heart has been broken, you could be more like Jeffrey Dahmer. Like it, it fluctuates to yeah. that severity to some people. So if that's not intact, if you don't know how to even take that loss, it will impact your parenting. It absolutely will. So that I consider your adult functioning. How do you function as an adult? How many of us have gone to our kids' daycare or school and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, that's John's mom or that's Karen's mom or that's... Should I use some black names? Yeah, some black names. use, use, use that's, them. That's my... It's a black name. show. <laughs> <laughs> Power to the people. Amen. <laughs> right? And a lot of us are addressed that way once we become parents. But yeah. they forget that I was a whole person before I started having kids. I was a whole person. I had dreams. I had aspirations. I had things that I wanted to do that did not include a child. And mm. so when we're talking to our parents, be it bio parents or foster parents, we forget that. And I'm sure not one of your parents woke up and said, yeah, I want to be a single parent and I want to be mired in poverty. Yeah. yeah. What, what was her 17 year old self thinking she wanted to do? Mm. So somehow they have to reconcile that the life that they thought they were going to have is not the life that they're having right now. Doesn't mean they can't have it, but there has to be some reconciliation and you still have to remember that the choice you made, like I was telling the young lady today, ended, it up, ended us up here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. By either who you allowed to be in your life, who had access to you, who you were in relationships with, all of that led to this to this moment right here i can help you through it but i can't take accountability for no, it no no and, and we're talking about the youth um i remember this i had mr wayne you remember mr wayne yeah 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 mr wayne he would come when i had the um teenage program over at lutheran he would mm -hmm. come in and speak and he would you know address the the the, the young males and young females mm -hmm. and to the young females he would always tell them protect your box don't just give it out to anyone protect your box and you'll see how you prosper mm -hmm. when when you when you become older and i and you know you will see a lot of them be confused like well what is he you know what is he saying mm -hmm. but that's the conversation that he would have and he would have a conversation with the young men like, listen, the, the mistakes that you're going to make now mm -hmm. will will stay with you, stay with, will affect you mm -hmm. as you get older. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know as because even when I was a teen, I felt like that um, I was invincible. You know what I mean? You know, I didn't care, you know, well, because I, well, you know, when I when I get older, then I'll take care of that. No, no. It's now. Yeah, it's now. And unfortunately for them, I feel like this generation is an instant gratification generation. They want it yeah. now. Yes. They want the rewards now. But what they don't realize is that the consequence comes right now. The same way those rewards can come to you now, so can the consequences. And they can be far reaching. Yeah. Right? Now, the, the stupid things we did mm -hmm. as teenagers... One, they're not on. They're not recorded anywhere. Oh, social media. I'm not on Freaknik. You will not find me there. <laughs> we'll find you on the Freaknik documentary. Absolutely not. We, we sure? Because you know you're from the south, so. Let me just say, my dirt has always been done in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that's how it's supposed to be? You will not record me. Even when I go out now, do not record me. When I am karaoke <laughs> and I'm yeah. living my best life, do not. Well, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Me. If I see a karaoke, I'm recording you. That's a black eye. <laughs> <laughs> my man Reese, I'm going to drop some gems. 
Hunter. Yes, she is. <laughs> yes, Thank she you. is. Miss Hunter. Thank you. You know what I mean, Miss Hunt? That listen, let me tell you. So what? You got your your MSW is MSW. You got your mask before my eyes. I don't care. But the point I ain't is, jealous. we got it. Yeah, yeah, we got it. Don't matter who got it first. It's that we got it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Listen, when you, that's all that's important. Look, when you said, "Yeah, I'm going back to school," I was like, "Damn, Michelle, she's gonna one up me." <laughs> when Michelle finished, I said, "You know what? If she can do it, I can do it." And that, that's the point of having certain quality of people in your life. Yes. Not to say everyone has to have an advanced degree, but I see you do it, I can do it. I can do, yeah, because yeah. we push each other. There you go. And you I know. have one girlfriend. I'm waiting for her to uh, tell me when she's going back to school. Freeman. <laughs> oh, hey. Why? Why you want to? I didn't say her first name. I didn't say her first name. I was about to say her first name, but I don't do it. Don't do it, Hammer. Do not get me beat down. Not today. So look, do you think social media is bad or good? I think it's a balance. Like I, I don't get home to the south much, so I get to see my friends' kids and their grandkids and stuff like that. So there's some pluses to it. I think when you are starting to look at people's lives on social media as that's all that it is, it's just mm-hmm. the glam of it, yeah. then that can be a problem because I'm not going to put my dirt out there. Do you no, all need but... to see me snotting and crying and carried on? No, that's personal. Right? So I keep that I keep that here. But I, yeah. I mean, I just think that there should be a balance. I think there's too much of putting all of your business out there. Yeah. That can be a problem. Yeah. And I mean, I, and, yeah, these parents, they're letting these phones and technology and social media run are uh, raising their children instead of them raising their children. Remember a lot of our parents don't have that. They don't have. So if they're still dealing with their own stuff and they're still, they haven't Mm -hmm. reconciled that this life that I've chosen is not the life I want. Well, if I give the kids a phone and they're appeased, that gives me time to still try and think about the life that I wanted. Right. And do my, it's it's the distraction. Yeah. So it's not, and a lot of our, I think a lot of our parents in their late twenties, thirties, even some of them in their forties, they're still broken because we weren't doing therapy back then. The thought was, no. well, send them to church. Jesus will fix it. <laughs> well, Jesus invented therapy, ma'am. And <laughs> yes. So yes. they, they didn't get it. I know I never got therapy for the losses, for the grief. Yeah. So yeah. I just really started processing grief in my late thirties, early forties. Mm. And how how have that challenge been for you, or that road been for you so far? Rough. I went yeah. to I, you know, because you have to do your twenty hours. Those of you who work in this field, y'all know them damn twenty. Get them twenties. Get them twenties in. <laughs> So there was one on grief and loss, and I thought, oh, this is great. This is show me, you know, give me some tools. Because mm-hmm. even though our, the parents are not deceased, a lot of our kids are dealing with death of friends, separation from families. I had to tell them I was not emotionally prepared for this. It yeah. was dealing yeah. with things that I have not dealt with and that I don't know if I'm ready to deal with even now. And it's 40-something years later, so it's yeah. rough. I mean, I have to agree with you. I mean, the I still process death. Mm-hmm. Like hard, mm-hmm. you know, especially with someone who's who's close to me. When my when my grandmother uh, passed away, mm-hmm. it really didn't hit me until almost two years later. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was I was on a bus, and then all of a sudden I just broke down. Aww, don't smoochie. don't start with that all stuff. Stop oh, that. <laughs> you go stop that. But you know, just because at that at that time when when she passed away, you know, I. You know, okay. Mm-hmm. You know, my grandmother passed away. I was sad, but mm-hmm. it really, like I said, it didn't hit me until two years later. Then mm-hmm. I'm just on a bus, and it, it, boom! It just kept coming, and the tears kept coming and coming and coming. What was the trigger? I have no idea. To this day, I still have no. And but I went to counseling. Mm-hmm. But to this day, I still, I still don't know what triggered it while I was on the bus. I mean, mm-hmm. it could have been the music I was listening to, mm-hmm. but. You know, I mean, when it hit me, then you know, because me and my grandmother, we were, we were close. We were like. So there was that one person that liked you, huh? Yeah. In- yeah. Interesting. Now I, I I enjoy people not liking me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Sorry, I wear shirts that kiss my ass. Mm. Read at the court and tell me. No, I will not. <laughs> no. I I am a professional. Mm-hmm. You know, between nine and five, I'm a pro. A pro ass. I'm a, I'm I'm only I'm only a pro ass. 
There you go. After there five. You, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but I, you know what? So think about what that must feel like for, because there's a difference in a parent being deceased mm-hmm. and knowing that your parent is somewhere on this planet, let alone this state or city that you can't access. Imagine yeah. what that's like getting up every day. I would lose my mind. Or the rejection that your parents just don't want you. I would lose my mind. I would lose my mind. <laughs> He's definitely afraid of freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> we, we may see Maurice on freaking out. Maurice, is there Ain't something that you'd like to share? Yeah, bro. Don't be hiding nothing, bro. <laughs> you hide in the dark, may come to the light. <laughs> ain't, that, ain't that what your mommy said? Yep, all the time. <laughs> all all right, right, let's talk about our inner our inner city youth, man. What are some of the what are some of the challenges you think our inner city youth inner city youths are facing? I mean, we see it all the time. It's the crime. They're completely desensitized mm-hmm. to what's happening around them. And I think people our age, um, and maybe a little older we are so quick to dismiss what they're going through. We're quick to dismiss it. Now you think that's, that's our generation or, Mm -hmm. Oh, for real. Mm -hmm. I think we're quick to dismiss it. I don't think we really take into account what these kids are really facing. The poverty, the social media, the crime, how many of them can count at least on one hand, how many friends they have lost or have been close to someone getting shot. Yeah, yeah. And we hear that a lot. That's especially, traumatizing. Especially in our, in our business. And But you know, I want to play a video. But before I play a video, I want to I talk about something. Now, If let's say you have a, a 16-year-old uh, female mm-hmm. who is craving attention. Mm-hmm. No, how do, you, how, do, how do you... How do you deal with that? Craving what kind of attention? I'm talking just, you know, jealousy from the other siblings. Um, just want to be the in the the eye of her of her, her her mother or her caregiver and just consistently lashing out. How do you how do you how how do you fix that? What? Pray? No, I'm just <laughs> I mean, is she in home? Is she in home? With her mama. What what with the mama? Oldest, middle, youngest. All right, let's say this. I'm I'm, I'm going to paint this picture for you. Okay. All right. In home with the mom. Mm -hmm. Listen up, everybody. In home with the mom. Mom has other siblings but need a lot of attention. So the 16-year-old is feeling slighted. How many kids? Getting in trouble. Let's say three kids total. Who's the oldest? Um, let's say let's say the sixteen's in in the middle. Okay. Let's say the sixteen's in the middle. She's in school. In school, but getting 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 into trouble. What are grades like? What? Grades grades are horrible. Are grades horrible because there's a learning disability, or because she's not doing the work? Oh, oh, you almost stumped me. I know. Let's say not doing the work. Come on, bro. <laughs> So probably trying to build a support system around her. Uh, that's just for her. That's just for her. Now, do you think that, because in our generation, it would be buck up. But then we would ask, Mom, what was going on while you were carrying this child? Uh. Because we do know that some of that can have an impact on who we turn out to be. What was going on while she was in the womb? Mm. I told y'all she's good. I mean, right, you you would ask, right? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, ask that? yeah. So, because it 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 does it does play a part. And then maybe if mom can recognize what if anything was going on that may have led to her, because whatever the mom experiences when the child is in the womb. The child experiences. Yeah. That's why we don't want the mom's distress. We don't want the fighting. We don't want certain things going on. We want her to be at peace because that tends to give us a more peaceful child, right? Because mm-hmm. just think mm-hmm. about it. If if there's just been nothing but chaos 
going on while I'm in the womb. And then you squeeze me out of this little thing and all of these bright lights come on and I'm in a completely different environment. So the birth process in and of itself is traumatic for a child. Mm -hmm. So if in vitro, if the child in vitro was, was a problem and then coming through the birth canal is a traumatic issue and we never address that. Where's this child getting the peace? So you do have to kind of look at what was going on around that time and how do we fix this? Where's the family unit? Where's dad? Where's grandma? Yeah. Oh, where's granddad? Where's, where's Uncle. papa? Right, where's auntie? Because what we know now, and I've experienced it personally and I see it in my job, kids will tell you who they want their people to be. They will identify for you who their people are. Mm -hmm. You as the adult need to make sure that those connections happen. So when they're young, the child doesn't know to call grandma and pop pop, but you do. You have to make that thing a real day to day connection. So as they get older, they have that. They know that they can turn to grandma. Okay, well, mom may be working, but my mom's going to come to my play because yeah. my mom doesn't miss any of my plays yeah. or pop pop will come to my track meets doesn't all have to be from mom and that's something i do tell kids it doesn't always have to come from just that one parent now you think it's up to us as parents to make sure that those supports are in play yes right. yes because what happens if you get sick or die then what happens Who, to your who's kid? gonna raise that child man there you go mm -hmm. so i always raise my kids to be okay without me mm -hmm. and a lot of people think that sounds weird but if you lose parents at a young age, the thought is, I may not be here to raise my kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was always okay with the stepmom or my daughter calling stepmom mom. Yeah, yeah. That meant that you are enjoying her and she's treating you well. Go for it. Yeah. Well, then you don't have a jealousy bone in your body. No, I don't. But it was more important for me to realize that my child will be okay should something happen to me, mm -hmm. then stake in my claim. I heard I have the, the, the stretch marks to prove I gave birth. Yeah, yeah. So I don't need to trip off of, oh, she calls someone else mom. Oh, she wants to be with her stepmom more than me. By all means, go right <laughs> ahead. I mean, and I think that's one of the reasons why in my youth, I was so close to my to my grandparents. Because mm -hmm. my mother would, she'd be like, listen, you want to go, you want to go live over there? Go right ahead. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, yeah, go right. Because I was, you know, I was like, "Ma, I want to go live with my, with my grandfather." Okay. Let me pack your bag. Uh, what? I'm not gonna argue about this. <laughs> but when we look at our parents, a lot of them have not taken the time to build that network around their kids. So yes. when, when the call yes. comes, who can Johnny go to instead of going into foster care? There's no one. But then again, a lot of them didn't grow up with a strong support system around them. So how do I expect you to be able to give what you didn't get? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, and that, that's one of the blessings. I mean, to, to have um, a parent with so many supports, and I'm not talking just family. I'm mm -hmm. talking um, friends. friends. Co you know, I mean, yeah. You co Listen, it, my mom had coworkers that I co called uncles and aunts. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that were family to me. Yeah. You know, and their children go. We all grew up together, mm -hmm. like we brothers and sisters. But do our kids have that? No. Do a lot of our youth have that? No. The answers no. They do no. not. No. They they have the the neighborhood dealer. You know, what I mean, or or some sort of older figure in their life who was committing crimes who out who's out there doing drugs so you know even when i ask them like yo man who who do you turn to when you want to talk to somebody and who do, who do they say no one no they don't even turn to teachers because the teachers don't care that's that's their thinking is that the teachers yeah. don't care but that's it's how do we change the narrative how do you shift the narrative to say yes i do want to hear what you have to say yes Oh, you know, so I'm, I want to play this video, and then we're going we gonna to talk about it. Okay. We're going to talk. Let me play it right now. I think I, hit, I got to reach over and hit this button. 
I look like a potato. My arms aren't as long as they used to. <laughs> Lord, I'm not gonna say. All right, so anyone else, let me give it a little context. Here. Now, that one was a teenager who stole a car mm-hmm. and crashed into the back of a school bus. There was a lot of children that got hurt. Yeah. Now, if anyone knows, these are some of the... Now, that was in Milwaukee, but in Philadelphia, we're, we are plagued by the same issues. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Teens who are just committing serious adult crimes. Mm-hmm. Where's the balance? Right, because the, the yes. my instinct says lock them up. But I how do we but we have to fix those kids. We got to fix that teenager. How, how how do how do we fix that teenager? A lot of our kids say they're not going to change because there are no consequences. They need to feel some. And mm-hmm. I always tell people, I know it sounds harsh. I rather them feel consequences now while they're still juveniles versus when they are 19 and then you can charge them as an adult as an adult so i don't i don't believe in i think i'm using this word right placating i gotta look it up (laughs) but don't quote me on that america because i don't know if that's the right word but appeasing let me just say that appeasing Um, i'll I'll go with that but i need to look that word up because i I like the way it sounds um (laughs) we have to stop appeasing our kids and stop making excuses for them because what we do know is that in 10 15 5 3 however old mm-hmm, they are mm-hmm. years the world's not going to give a crap that they were in foster care they're not going to care that mom wasn't there they're not going to care that dad wasn't there they're not going to care that you grew up in foster care what they are going to care is that you committed a crime and i'm going to lock you up and i'm going to give you a sentence that is probably far harsher then you're ready to accept. So why not let's do something on the juvenile side. So if I, if I place you in one of these juvenile delinquent facilities, okay, then there should be some real therapy. There should still be family finding going on. So as I continue to work with you, I can start having you go visit the home that you're going to eventually be released to. Right? Yeah. There needs. Yep. I can still make sure that your education is on point. Let's see where you really are versus placing you in these credit recovery programs that only want you to get a bare minimum score so that you can pass. But it doesn't mean that you can read or process or do the work appropriately. So I'm not necessarily because I know how that may look or sound mm-hmm. to place brown, black and brown children in delinquent placements. Mm-hmm. But what if there was a revision of what a delinquent placement actually looked like? Uh, so, all right, you stole this car. Yes. Part of your restitution is you're going to go do some maintenance, some some like what is it, janitorial stuff at the car dealership. Get you into like a um, a mentor program because these kids are brilliant. I don't know how to hotwire a car. I don't know how to oh, do that. Uh, listen, they. They, they're doing stuff that I wouldn't know how to do. Well, let's use your your mind for something positive. They used to say that most of our scientists and engineers, our mathematicians, our entrepreneurs are in jail because they were they the chemists mm-hmm. who were making the drugs. The, the What are the little Michi people, the BMF people who had yeah, this uh, yeah. multi-million dollar business? A what, business. What Drug if, business, but it was a business. But what if that was used for a positive? So instead of letting them just go down that path, all right, let's take you to a corporate 500 company and watch how you can turn this into legitimate money and actually live a legitimate life. That would have been two black men who yeah. were home with their children. Far less murders going on because you're in a legitimate business. I'm not going to say that's going to erase everything. I'm not completely <laughs> no. ignorant, people. But it could shift some of the narrative that we're dealing with. My dad, for example, got accepted to NYU. 
stayed on the dean's list for a whole term. So he could prove a point. He needed to win a bet with someone that he could stay out of trouble. So he got accepted to NYU, enrolled, attended classes, got on the dean's list, stayed for the semester so he could win the bet, and then he stopped. These these men have brilliant brains. Oh, let me, like you said, chemists, engineers. So let's let's the, future architects. Right. So let's let's put them. Out. You still have to pay for the for the damage you did. Don't get me wrong, but let's let's make this look different. I mean, I think some of of the challenges that we face in Philadelphia, and I'm sure in other big cities, is what to do with our teens. Um. You know, I I work with the teams. Mm-hmm, you sure do. You know, so and it is oh man, it's it's like it's like pulling teeth just to try to get them get them ah do what you gotta do. But you know, I mean, once you you turn a teen around, I mean, it's it's so gratifying. Mm-hmm. It's gratifying because they see you care. Yeah, yeah, and believe me, they can they can see through the bullshit. Excuse no, excuse my language, mm-hmm. but they can see through the BS. Mm-hmm. And if you come at them with the BS, they gonna give you the BS. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know they went. But as far as funding and programs, I mean, we are losing a lot of our programs, a lot of our funding, especially throughout the city. So we, they really don't have any place to go. They commit these crimes. Mm-hmm. Where do they go? JGSC, and they be right back out. Right back out. Right we, back out in a couple of months. We had a kid. Um, who was picked up by the SEPTA police or mm-hmm. with what they thought was cocaine. 12 years old. They brought him to DHS. <laughs> what we gonna do? Oh, what was it, flour? Yeah, it was flour. Oh, they Jesus. It was flour later on. <laughs> later on down the line. But initially, until it went, you know, they sent it off and got it tested, It was they thought it was cocaine. There's no consequence. So it's just, um, but what I will say on this, in terms of funding, we have far too many millionaires and multimillionaires within our own community. Oh, yeah. We don't always have to depend on governmental funding. What you pay for one chain or one bracelet or one of these fancy cars could run one of these programs for at least a year. Oh, easily. And that's including the building and staffing. Easily. But it seems like some, nobody want to put in that hard work. And and I'm not going to lie, it is a lot of work because I had my own program. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work. I mean, you got to get out there in the street. You got to knock on some doors. You got to go down to courthouses. You got to present your, um, your program. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to write uh, RFPs, requests for, for proposals, mm-hmm. proposals. Right. Get yourself a grant writer if you don't know how to write the grants yourself. You're going to pay me, though. Right? You're going to pay me to write the grant? It, I just asked. Listen, I learned how to write my own grant because I didn't want to pay nobody $1,300. I said, for what? For for 50 pages? You know what? I got it. For my skill set. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's doable. And if we don't do the work, and by we, I mean the black and brown, we can say everything we want to say. Eventually, mm-hmm. it's going to get to a point where we're going to lose a whole generation of our people. Oh, yeah. Because they're out there committing crimes and murders. I mean, the... and if it's not. Man, the if statistics it's, are crazy. And if, oh, I'm sorry. If it's not your kid doing it specifically, your kid knows someone who is doing it. They're impacted by what their friends do. Don't yeah. think that they're not. Yeah. It's going to eventually find its way to your door, one way or the other. Mm. So you don't, you, we cannot afford to not be involved either directly or indirectly. Yeah. So now let's talk about, let's talk about our female youth and human services. Let me drink. Would it be, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me, let me get my, let me get my sip on. Shoot your shot. Shoot my shot. Shoot it. <laughs> now I remember, I remember um, years ago. I went to go see uh, Frederick Douglass grand great grandson mm. speak. Oh, the boy's a killer. But was he as good looking as his 
as his great 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 great. Yeah, I don't know about all that. His Frederick was fine. <laughs> I ain't even old. Frederick was fine, boy. <laughs> I, but he was going ham mm-hmm. on because it, it was it was a program for a lot of single parents and stuff. You know, a lot of single mothers, single fathers, mm-hmm. and he he was going ham on the audience. Mm-hmm. And but he was really he was really going ham on the mothers. And once some of his talking points were, he was saying that you're not treating your sons the way you tr- way you raise your daughters. You're raising your daughters to be educated, college bound. Now this did, now this was years ago, mm-hmm. educated, college bound. But then you raising your sons to w- walk around the house with slippers on, hair nets, pants all saggy. Yeah, I don't not graduating high school. Out committing crimes, now holding them accountable the way you now this is just to the mothers, the way you you're you're holding your daughter accountable. Mm-hmm. That role seems to have flipped now. You know what I mean? What's so what so what's going on with these female with the 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 female youths of of Amer- of America? Cause, and it's been a long time since I have looked at the statistics. But this has been coming for some time. Yes. Where the girls are far more aggressive, violent. Yes. And I don't want to use the word out of control because I don't want to paint that image of them. But they they are far exceeding their male counterpart. Yeah. Let me tell you what I remember. Mm-hmm. Before before I want to cut you off, I want you to go back. But I'll tell you what I remember. What you remember? I remember when girls use their mouths. Mm-hmm. Would get men in trouble. Mm-hmm. Oh, you gonna you gonna you gonna let him talk? You gonna uh, now? It's the girls that's jumping in the fights. Yeah, they're gonna pop you right in the mouth. It, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, carrying guns. Before they used to, before they used to carry the guns for the boyfriends. Mm-hmm. Now they now do. they're carrying guns. Yeah. <laughs> so and this has been coming for some time, and there are. Um, if I hit the lottery that six months, I am going to do some more studying on gender specific programming. Mm-hmm. Um, but this has been coming for a while now. I think I've been doing this since 2004. And I know back in 2003, 2002, there was really a bigger push on understanding the differences between male and females and how treatment or how programming should look. Yes. For males versus females. Not to say that, oh, we want the girls to have flowers and pink. And, no, but there needs to be really some different components to their programming to kind of reach them. I don't know if the moms are raising the boys or girls to do either of those things. I think they're just merely existing. Yeah. Well, from what I see, it seems as though that, again, the women are more aggressive. The men... When I was young, you know, I mean, my grandfather, my uncles told me, you know, a, a man is going to act like a man. You know, no one should let you shouldn't let anyone take you out of out of out of, out of your zone mm-hmm. or, you know, or words really shouldn't knock you off your tilt. Mm-hmm. Now, men can't even argue without. And I'm not talking just fist fighting. I'm talking pulling out guns. Yeah. Because they got some bitches. Beca- it, there you go. <laughs> I love it when my good friend says, <laughs> No, there, there you go. He, he got some bitch in him, baby. Like, really? <laughs> you know, I mean, it, you know, you, you can't even argue. You can't even have a disagree. You can't even have a a a, a, a traffic disagreement without it becoming without violent. it really becoming violent. You know, if, if so, if the adults are acting that way. What do you think our youth are going to do? No, exactly. So, and, and and I'm not to say giving them a pass, because I think even in our youth, we're still accountable for our decision making. But I can understand it. Like, if that's all that I know, that's how mm-hmm. my dad acts, that's how my uncle acts. Well, my dad did act like that, and he got shot, so he's not here anymore. If that's what the music is, 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 uh, perpetuating that's all they see on the news yes Yes. i mean this is what it is this is what our lives are now yeah so at some point there has to be 
a pivot of what what is going on in our homes and holding each other accountable holding your we have women who we are friends with but we know they're not doing right by their kids Mm -hmm. well you can't hang with me and be my friend and not be doing your parental responsibility (laughs) i I can't work with you (laughs) you ain't gonna be drinking all night you gotta get home there are men who harbor their friends knowing that their friends are not so at some doing what point, they're supposed to be doing. Think about it. When we were back back in the day, and this was before any of us probably were even thought of, there were certain things you couldn't do and go around good people because they weren't going to have you in their company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now it's very acceptable. So the standards have changed. Our kids, the standards are so low for them. It's it's a uh, it's a challenging, daunting task to think about what we have ahead to turn this around. But I know I have a grandchild. I know eventually, well, you have grandchildren, mm-hmm. and eventually some of you out there will have grandchildren. This is not what I'm looking like for it to be like for me. I I plan to do this for maybe another ten or fifteen years, and then I'm going to be a beach bum. That <laughs> that is the goal. You're, I don't want to be going to be a southern house. beach bum. I, I don't care where it is. I just need some seafood, some good wine, some liquor, and the beach. That's it. I don't need a big house. It could be a hut for all I care. I just, that is what I, but we have grandchildren who will be living in this world. Yes. I want to at least try to make something look different for what she may be facing in the next 10 or 15 years. Yeah. So now let's go back to the social workers. So now do you think social workers are overworked? Yes. You think we're underpaid? Yes. Listen, I have a study here. Mm-hmm. Now I pulled this from, where did I get this from? MySocialWorkNews.com. All right. So I'm going to hit you with the bad. I'm going to hit you with the bad before I hit you with the good. Or you want me to hit you with the good before I hit you with the bad? Shoot your shot, daddy. It don't matter. Okay. I'll hit you with the bad. All right. All right. September, from September to December 2020. The Department of Education has revealed that local authority children and family social workers mm-hmm. were contacted to work on, on average 35 hours per week. But the average number of hours they actually reported mm-hmm. was more than 40. Mm-hmm. You think is that true? Hell yeah. <laughs> how can I, we how can so, we fix that? Because we're working a lot of hours. Wh- I mean, it's it's. It's very simple. You Mm -hmm. have to pay. So when you go on LinkedIn and some of these other platforms where you can kind of gauge what the actual salary is, the actual salary for a child welfare social worker is around base. It's around 60 to 66,000 a year. So off the bat, we can tell that here in Philly, we are paid far under what we should under be what the ba- Yes. So you can't keep talent, which means you have to overwork those of us who are stupid enough to stay in here because this is what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I know as a social worker, I was doing easy, well over 100 hours. When they said, oh, put your hours in the system the way you work it. Okay. It was Oh, that'd 90. get kicked back. <laughs> yeah, but you told me, but what I would always do is screenshot my stuff before I hit submit. So I always have a screen account of what I actually put in versus what you changed it to after. Yeah. So, and it's because it's always something to do. Yes. Yes, it is. So, you have to pay more so that you can recruit and keep talent, not people who did basket weaving 101 and they need a job. You want people who really want to do this. I mean, you it really has to be a calling. Yeah. You know, it, and I mean, it is. It really has to be a calling. Because even when I was a youth, I would never think that I would do this type of work. Me either. I thought you, would you, you know what I mean? <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm like, man, I should have went and got a you know, master's in business. I got shit got an MBA. <laughs> right. Know? No, no one I don't think any of us actually thought we would be doing this. 
this was not what I, this is not what my undergraduate is in. So this is, yeah. this isn't what I started out in. This is kind of what evolved for me. And I couldn't see at this point doing anything else, anything different. Yes. But yeah. you have to pay. You have to pay to keep talent. And you have to actually recruit people who want to do the job. Yes. Not someone who was working at Macy's for four years, but she has a degree in cat weaving and decides she <laughs> wants a cool and what, job. And what they do. Oh, they, oh, you, oh you got a degree? Oh, well, oh. You, it go your case. It goes okay. <laughs> right? So you have to. And then when you do bring people in, you have to give them a chance to acclimate to what they're doing mm. instead of drowning them in cases. Yeah. So are we overworked? Yes, we yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. I got another. I got, so check this out. Now say three quarters, 75 percent of social workers reporting that more than their contacted hours or I'm sorry, contracted hours, mm -hmm. either all the time or most weeks are more than 50 to 60 hours per week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I know from I, experience. I, 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 don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't doubt that at all, yeah. especially if you are working here in Philly. Yeah. I know from experience, I go and say, you know what, I'm gonna, let, me, let me hurry, let me knock this out. And this is over the weekend. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know what, let me hurry and knock this out. Mm -hmm. Then you find yourself, you work through your whole weekend. Yeah. And yeah. You know, or just staying up late to about one, one or two, two o'clock in the, in the yep. morning. Getting yep. work done. It's like, yep. and then you're tired. So it's, it is, I can see it. And mm -hmm. I'm hoping that there is going to be a shift in how this gets done. I know that there has been conversation with city council about our pay what it needs to look like versus what it is. And I would hope that it wouldn't take another nationwide tragedy for Philadelphia to make the changes that they need to to the child yeah. welfare system. Because we do, it needs an overhaul. It does. We want to work with the parents. We want to work with the families on that one to one basis. Mm -hmm. But it is not easy uh, it's because, difficult. because of the caseload size. Yes. And I remember I had one person tell me, and I'm not going to name names. The comment was, well, just write the note. It doesn't have to be good. I'm prepared to have to be called into whatever forum in a couple of years to explain why this note was submitted this way. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not okay with that. Like, I, I don't you can talk to me about why my note says what it says, but I don't want to be called to the carpet because the work is shoddy and it's poor. And then when something happens, the world wants you to be able to explain why, why was your yep. work shoddy yeah. and poor? Well, because if the state has rehauled this and says, okay, we want those social workers or the case managers to go through this three month training, and based off of their completion of that, the state average should be no more than 10 to 12 cases. Not well, that, children. That's the state. But, right. So, but if we're going to go based off of the state, which means if I want to bring you on, you have to go through this and get certified. Mm -hmm. Then shouldn't the rest of what I'm doing go along with the state, meaning you get 10 to 12 cases? Not twenty two or seventeen or thirty. Yeah, but then it comes like who, who gonna work those cases? Who gonna work all of those cases that just sitting there? Then you so they gonna they gonna get us to work. Then you need to pay. I had a young lady who interviewed, and I like I was so excited at the possibility of working with her. She accepted the position until they sent her that offer letter, and she's oh no, I can't do this. A lot of, a lot, because I've talked to a lot of students. Mm -hmm. And they I used to go around and say, oh, they, young social workers still in school. And I'm like, yeah, it's. It's not, it's no, no money. It's, it's no money. It, yeah. So the idea is anytime that happens, anytime I get that, I just screenshot it and I send it up the chain. Here's another one that you guys cost me to lose. Here's another <laughs> one that you cost How me to lose. How are they like? Lose. Damn, Miss Hunter. So when someone doesn't get seen, oh well, 
not my it's not my problem i didn't i didn't i I can only do but so much in one month and i don't want to wear out my people yes Mm -hmm. yes well that's not for the bad so i got i got the good good. hair i got the good hair give it to me now i got some positivity here the vast majority 85 percent of child and family social workers were satisfied with their job security Oh, we're always going to have jobs. Job security or your job. Job security. That's a difference. (laughs) The world can be coming to an end and we will still have a job. Because there will still be someone doing something absolutely asinine. (laughs) That we got to (laughs) help. I'm just saying. It's the truth. You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. It's the truth. It could be the last three people on earth. Yeah. One of them going to be a social worker. Here I am. All right, here we go. Here we go. Most social most social workers, seventy two percent, found their job satisfying. That's good to know. That's refreshing. I remember my last year of grad school, and I said, "Okay, I'm going to go back and do. I want to go back in the field. Let me get a job as a case manager." I had so many people question me as to why would you do that? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, well, why Why are you doing it? Like, I want to do it because what you're doing. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm. didn't want to do it. They did not want it. I'm like, then why are you here? So I think we have to kind of get out of the mind frame of complaining about our job. Because a lot of us have, we've been here for a while, so it can't yes. be that bad. Yes. So let's kind of shift that narrative. Oh, I might be tired today in this moment. I may not be feeling great. But overall, I love going to work. I love every day that I get up and get to go to work. Yeah. I really do. Rather, it is at home or at court or at my office. I remember talking to a relative and I was psyching myself up for the day to come. And she was like, oh, you should be grateful, honey, that you have a job. I said, I am. I said, this is for me to prep my mind for the bullshit that I might be <laughs> yeah. walking into. And Some literally, of the bullshit that's coming down the line. And literally in that day, maybe two or three hours after I got in the office, I was sitting here minding my business. Here's a little girl trying to stab up everyone with a knife. Oh, stabby, next stabby. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, she had a pair of scissors and she wanted to know about some Sherry little the boy. shank. Yeah, she wanted to know about her boyfriend. I'm like, well, we don't know him. I'm like, you got to give me the knife. Like she was, she was a little off putting. Yeah. She, and she, yeah. I remember she asked, she said, were you scared? I was like, scared of what? She said, well, me with the scissors. I'm like, no. She said, you, you weren't afraid? I'm like, no. She said, well, why? I said, because we both have, we, I want to make it home. So that one gonna turn out well for you, my dear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was not gonna turn no, out. No, I was scared well what's gonna happen to you. To you, because I'm going home to see my family at the end of this day, <laughs> one way or the other. And and I mean, don't get me wrong, everyone, if you're listening. Social work. I mean, I'd rather be a social worker than a police officer. Now, mind you, I love structure, so I wouldn't mind being a police officer. Really. Yeah, I want to be. A, I want to be a police. Officer. I never told you a story about when I want to be a cop. Wear, you want to wear that uniform? I want to be a detective. Listen, let, 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 me, let me tell you this story. So, I took the the police test. You know, I mean, pass, pass the police test, but well, mm-hmm. I'll go back to the story before this story. So, you know, I'm, I took the test. Um, you know, my had a had a high score, high ranking, so I went. Yeah, listen, I, I was I was full fledged gung ho. I was gonna be a cop, so I went to my interview. Yeah. All right, y'all listening? <laughs> I went to my interview. Uh-huh. I had some unpaid parking tickets. Say less. <laughs> so at the interview, <laughs> I'm, I'm being interviewed by I believe he was a, a lieutenant. This was at the police headquarters. Uh-huh. But so he interviewed me. So he like you know, Mr. Stanley. You know, listen, we ran your name. You got some unpaid parking tickets, which triggered a bench warrant. <gasps> well, I'm interviewed. So he said, look, we, <laughs> we got to take you downtown nice. to traffic court. Just get them addressed. And when you come back, we'll finish the interview. So I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'll be like, look, we got a handcuff. So I'm, I'm in my suit. They handcuffed you? Handcuffed me. For traffic court? handcuffed me transported me down there i'm in my suit everything put me in the little cell i don't know if anyone in from philadelphia know about them little cells behind traffic court so i was in that little cell Mm -hmm. and so i had to go see the judge so i went in front of the judge and the lieutenant was 
he was on my behalf, testified on my behalf. Uh-huh. He was like, listen, then, I mean, we ran his name. He got some unpaid part. We want to bring him down here so he can address him so that we can go back and finish the interview. Judge said, I don't care about none of that. He going upstate. <laughs> I was like, what? what? They, yes. They locked you up? Wait a minute, you did time. Let me tell you something. Hold on. Are you a felon? <laughs> Security. <laughs> so, so hold on. He said, if I don't get my $300, by the end of the day, you going upstate. I'm like, oh, he tripping, tripping. I had to call my, I, I called. Call mom Dukes. I, I called mom Dukes. Mom, you know, my mom was a nurse, mm-hmm. so she couldn't make it. Called my grandma. Well, my grandpa, my granddaddy, the, you know, they shot down with $300. They were going to send you. They were going to send me over 300 This is when traffic court back in the day. Remember when traffic court back in the day was locking everybody up no. and nobody wanted to go to traffic court? No. You don't remember? No. I, oh, yeah, you were. You were. You weren't from the city. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So, well, they had a bad reputation of just locking everybody up. It was, let me tell you, Philadelphia is so corrupt. They would just no no matter it could be one ticket. I'm stupid. They wouldn't that. give you no rain. They would threaten to lock you up or lock you up, and then try to strong arm you to to pay that ticket. So my grandparents came down, paid the ticket. I went back, interviewed, and you know, not finished my interview. So I got accepted, um, you know, to the police academy. So, but you had to go through orientation. I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting in orientation. I mean, it was. This big auditorium, uh, uh, far northeast, uh-huh. and all these other candidates, uh-huh. and I'm sitting there, man, fuck this shit. Really? I got up and I walked out. Why? I changed my mind. I ain't want to be a police officer anymore. What? And then that's when I became a social worker. <laughs> yep. What kind of bull? <laughs> yep. That's when I became a social worker. So, but. You know, being a social worker, is some, it, it is gratifying. But the one thing, once you start, you can't stop. And I tell, I tell people this all the time. You will never find another job like being a social worker. One, you don't have to be in the office. So stop that narrative. All the time. Because folks don't want to show up to the office when you tell them. When you tell them. <laughs> yeah, but they got to. to. But it, it ain't like you punching in 40 hours sitting at a desk. No. Or, you know what I mean, or, break, you know, breaking up concrete. No, there's flexibility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, and if you know how to manage your time right, manage your cases right, mm-hmm. you can get a lot of things done. All right. I agree. You know what I mean? You can get a Two, the second thing is gratifying. It's so gratifying when when you have good outcomes to, to your cases. What about when you don't have good outcomes? Oh, I mean, no, that, now that, that part sucks, you know, how, but you got to learn how to deal with it. How, learn how to deal with the bad. How do you, how do you deal with it? How do I deal with it? Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> Woodfoot Reserve. <laughs> 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 like, like you're on a game show. There you go. Yeah. That's, that's how I deal with it. <laughs> No, but seriously. No, but seriously, yeah. I mean, I deal with it, you know. Talk to my mom. Talk to you. Talk to Pam. Talk to um, my friend, you know, Plog and stuff like that. You know, man, I play Xbox. You know, that's it. That, you know, I, I got support. Okay. I got support. And and I do this. I, I talk to my people. The peeps. Yeah, I talk to my peeps. You know what I mean? This joint podcast. Hello, America. <laughs> Hello, fucker. <laughs> Hello, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so this is what we do. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's what's up. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Right. So I want to thank Miss Hunter for coming by. Yo, what am I here? No pleasure. claps tonight. There we go. I did it. Yeah. I'm impressed. This is pretty cool. Listen, it took me a minute to get here. She, ah, yeah, yeah, now you finally bring your behind here. I'm this setup though like i'm thinking i could really do some amazing soup logs on this computer like you i'm gonna make you come and do this for me like i i don't know i want that i want that okay. you want you want in your basement yep all right all right yep all right That's i want to try just make sure you have some woodford reserve for me so who woodford reserve let me hit it again 
No, you got to do it right. You got to yeah, be yeah. you got to be gentle with it. You got to hold it up like this, right? And then you do like. <laughs> yeah, look at the camera right there. We're out. <laughs> hey, listen, Misha. Oh man, I'm running out, man. I'm you out there. Well, you've been drinking the some... hell out of that bottle. I'm going to go get some more. Don't worry about how long I've been drinking. You got that last week. You so, got all of that within a week. So your liver is going to be extremely tired. I only got one life. Week. I ain't gonna get. All right, go ahead. I'm taking boy. it with me. Go ahead, black boy. <laughs> I'm taking it with me. Go right I'm on. taking my liver with me. <laughs> she jelly. <laughs> <laughs> this joint podcast, man. Listen, we want to thank y'all for joining us, man. You know, make sure you tune in every yes. Tuesday at 8 p.m. This is pretty cool. You know, what I mean, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. What's up? You want to say bye bye? Take care of your 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 social workers, people. Go buy <laughs> go buy them dinner because they ain't got no money. Yeah, don't don't. Don't don't believe her. She she got she got all the money. And she 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 be stashing. Yeah. No, she be stash. What was that restaurant that we went to after court when you had me try that drink? The oyster house. Yeah, Yo, that's she, my spitzer. Listen, she made me try this drink with it's, oyster with oyster in it. It's with an oyster, oyster in shooter. it. It's an oyster shooter. It was the nastiest. Ho- roughest drink I ever tasted in my life. Can't take no uncultured people, no place. No. Who wants to and drink listen, liquor with an oyster in it? I was there today. Oh, I for real? Every time I leave court, let's go. No, you know where I go? Sephora? No, the place where we got those, um, those cheesesteak drink- wraps. Yes. The Irish pub. Love it. Oh. Dude, they got the best beer. They have good drinks. They do. And I took the recipe cards. I took pictures of the recipe cards to make them at home. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, here go fly. Look at fly. Talking about I don't like you, but I like you, big boy. He loves you. <laughs> I don't dislike you. I love you, big boy. I love you. <laughs> so let me don't get out of here. Come on, you, we going we we gonna do a shot off air? Yes. yes. All right, all right, y'all. We gotta go because we about to bring up the last of my Woodford Reserve. You know what I mean? Listen, I'll see y'all Tuesday, eight p.m. Thank you. Well, for next Tuesday, me. eight p.m. I'm out. Deuces. Yeah. <laughs>